more time sing your presence is an open door we want you lord oh like never before oh your presence is an open door so come now lord oh like never before that's the heart that we cry out to you god we want your presence
understand the words of what we're singing. But this bridge in this song is so, so powerful. Because you are telling God, I want you to flood in over my soul like a mighty rushing wind. I want you to flood into my soul. Reach deep into the depths of me, God, and just change me from the inside out. I don't want to be the same anymore. Like a mighty storm. Tornadoes, hurricanes, they can wipe out the stuff that's around them depending on the strength of the storm. But even if we are in a storm, God is stronger than that storm. So when we pray like a mighty storm, stir within me, stir within me, God. Any and everything that's of you, bring it forth onto the surface, Lord Jesus. So when we sing this bridge again, I want you to think about that like a mighty rushing wind blowing over any and every circumstance, any and every trial, tribulation that I might be going through. God is just going to...
as we sing and we lift our voice and we tell our Savior that we surrender everything to Him. Sometimes when you think about that, it can be a little scary because we don't know on the other side of that what's gonna turn out. It means relinquishing our control. I'm, I'm kind of a control freak myself. I like to know the plan. I like to know what's gonna happen and God doesn't really work that way. And so as I'm singing, I surrender all. In the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, but once I do, what then, right? But the Word tells us that He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. That He's always fighting and working things out for our good. He promises us that so we can have confidence in our Father that when we give up control and we surrender to Him, that He is good enough and faithful enough to work on our behalf. And sometimes when that happens, we just have to say, it is well. It is well. And that's just me saying, I believe in you, God. I believe and I trust in you that you're gonna see me through this. So whatever you came in here with, whether if it's your marriage, you're having marriage problems, if you're having relationship problems with your kids or you have financial problems, you need provision or you're just sitting in a situation where you can't see your way out, just say it is well. And we're gonna sing this chorus this morning and as you're singing it, I want you just to think of all the things that you're letting go and letting God have and you're just saying in, in faith, it is well. I don't need the plan, I don't need control. It is well in my soul, amen.
time, will you just lift your hands all over this building? And it is well. It is well. will serve you very quickly. Seven, it says, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Before we receive communion this morning, can we just take 30 seconds and can we ask the Lord to search us? And if there's something that he reveals to us, will you just ask for forgiveness over it right now? Father, today search us, God, I pray. Lord, search us, Lord, I ask. Lord, Lord, reveal things into us, Lord. Lord, that if it's in an unworthy manner, God, that, Lord, that we would repent, Father. Lord, search us, Lord, today, God. Lord, as we worship and love you, Lord, today, Father, let your presence speak to us. For the Bible says, For I received from the Lord which also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant. Don't turn my mic down. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for the body of Christ. Can we take our way for today? And can we just individually all thank the Lord for the body of Christ? Father, I thank you, Lord, for the body of Christ. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you would sacrifice your son Lord that we may have life Lord that a body that would bear the stripe bore the stripes upon your back Lord you would wear the crown of I, I pray father Lord today Lord you would you would bless this father 
as we do this in remembrance of thee, you may break and eat. Will you take the cup? How many of you are grateful for the blood of Jesus? Let's bless the cup. Lord, thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, today that the blood of Jesus, Father, still has power today. Lord, thank you, Father, Lord, that the blood of Jesus, Lord, Lord, today, Lord, millions upon millions of people, Father, have received this cup. And Lord, today we're grateful for the forgiveness, God, that you've brought into our lives. Lord, that we may have eternal life with you. Lord, I thank you, Father, for it. And God, we praise you in Jesus' name. You may receive. And it is well with my soul, with my soul. Can we give him a hand clap of praise? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to see you this morning. I want you to turn around and greet one another. Tell me glad to see each other at Elevate Church at the 11 o'clock service. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated if you can. Amen. How many of you love Jesus? Amen. I get the opportunity to receive the offering today. And uh, I want to tell you, thank you for your faithfulness. As we come into a season of thankfulness and November is always thankful and, and December is always giving and, and generosity. And, and we walk into seasons that... Uh, we're thankful that God has allowed us to pour back in our community. I think it's so important that we understand as a church that we can't just be a church that reaches third world countries. We have to be a church that reaches our community. And in reaching our community means that we pour back into it. You know, this, this weekend through our food pantry, we'll give away 500 turkeys to 500 families that don't have a turkey for this coming Thanksgiving. And I'm thankful for that, amen. And this will be our probably our second largest food drive of the year. Christmas is always the largest. But because of the generosity and the faithfulness of the great people of Elevate Church, we're able to reach and meet needs right here at home and make a difference, an impact in lives. We have the obligation. So I believe we have the obligation to, to help those that are in need. I, I believe that it should be on our hearts and our minds that, that we should be thankful, a posture of thankfulness. That God, thank you for, for allowing us to have the resources to reach and to help those that are less fortunate. And, and, and you have to understand this weekend, there's going to be a lot of people that may not have anything to be thankful for, but we want to be a light in their in their trouble, in their storm, a light that shines in their darkness, that, that when they're struggling, we're there to help them. We're not there to gain off of their lack. We're don't, we're, that's why I, I don't allow pictures to be taken of people that, that we're helping because I, 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 I don't know about you, but I've had struggle in my life. And I didn't necessarily want Facebook to know that I struggled. 
You may say, well, I don't ever see no post about it and, and all the cars. Yeah, we may take a picture of an aerial shot, but we ain't taking a picture of faces because I don't want them to be ashamed. I, I'm, I want them to be grateful that we're able to help them and then watch us pick them up out of poverty and take them into the places where God's called them to be, amen? That's what the church is supposed to do. So as we give today, we give with generosity, we give with thankfulness that we're able to. And we're able to help and bless, amen? So there's three ways you can give. You can give in a bucket as it passes. If you're giving check, you can just put it in a bucket. If you're giving cash, there's a tithing envelope in the center chair of every row uh, here. Um, and then you could give on the QR code. And as, as we give today, we just give out of obedience. And I just want to tell you, thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being obedient. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, today for everything you've done. I thank you, Lord, for your, uh, I thank you, Lord, that, that you have been faithful to us. And I thank you, Lord, for the wonderful people of Elevate Church. I thank you, Lord, for their faithfulness, God, that we're able to continue the vision that you've given us to reach our community. Lord, help us today, Father. Help us, Lord, grow in this, Lord, I pray. Help us, Lord, have faith in this, Lord. Lord, thank you, Father. Bless every giver today. Bless their household. Bless their families. Bless their businesses, Lord that we may see an increase in their life. And Lord, I thank you for it. in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. Lord bless you as you give. Good morning, Elevate Church. How's everyone doing today? Hey, that's a lot better response. Better than nine o'clock. It was still a little sleep, but it's okay. Hey, any first time guests in the, play, in the house today? Any first time guests? Raise your hand. Let me see you. I won't, I won't make you stand up. I see you, sir. Anybody else? I see you, ma'am. I see you, ma'am. Hey, we're so honored to have you today. If you don't mind just scanning the QR code, we'd love to be able to reach out and get to know you a bit. Uh, Grow Track, Grow Track 2 starts on Wednesday. So if you want to become, uh, become a member of a church and also learn uh, a little bit about your foundation with your walk with Christ, this Wednesday will be an opportunity to do so. Also, Elevate Her Painting. Um, their sign-ups are open for November 24th. If you're interested, if you're a lady and you're interested in being a part of this, this is a perfect place to be. Also, Elevate Her, the ladies, y'all are busy. Uh, we'll be having a lunch tomorrow at the Blue Sky from 11.30 to 1 p.m. And young adults, where you at, young adults? Let's go. I see some of y'all, 18 to 35. That's what Google says. I see you. I see you. Yes. <laughs> hey, come join us uh, this Saturday at the Activity Building at 7 p.m. Let me see. Worship night, November 17th, next week at 6 p.m. We get a taste of our fast uh, worship night. If you have not been a part of our worship night, it's incredible. You do not want to miss this next Sunday. Also, youth parents, spring, spring retreat, a meeting is mandatory. So we need you here uh, November the 13th, right after church service. If so if you want to get rid of your kids for a few days, you better be at this meeting. Amen. All right. Welcome back, Pastor Sheldon. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, um, just a couple of things that we want to do today. Uh, if you are a veteran of our armed services, will you just stand to your feet? We want to recognize you this, this Veterans Weekend. Amen. 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 Thank you for your service. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your dedication. And it's because of your service, we were able to uh, worship today and join together today and be together today. Amen. And so we always want to honor our veterans and, and your sacrifice that you have. Um, out front after service today, we table set up uh, for our um, Christmas angels. And uh, if you would like to participate in that, now I have some rules with that Christmas angels. If you take a Christmas angel, don't go stick it on your refrigerator. And then on Christmas day, realize you didn't buy nothing. These Christmas angels are for the orphans in our area. And we want to make sure that they get the gift that they, that they need and that they want. And this isn't about the 6,000 toys we're going to give away for Christmas. This is different. This is where you get to participate and buy a toy. Take your kids with you and buy a toy and, and wrap it. Or do they wrap it? I don't know if they wrap it or not. Praise the Lord. No, I don't see, no, we don't wrap it. Just bring it back here and we'll judge it. I'm just playing. 
since we don't wrap it, we're going to judge it. And then, and then we're going to, we'll, we'll give those to our orphanages and to the Salvation Army, to the places where uh, the Christmas trees, the angels' trees come from. And so if you would do that, we would appreciate you and get those gifts turned in early so that we can make sure uh, that, that everyone gets them on time. The second thing is on the table over here on the south side of the church, my right, your left on the south side, is going to be a table for the Midland Police Department. They have a raffle um, that is going to help. Um, they're raising money to help some people. And so if you would like to participate, I think the raffle tickets are uh, $20. And since we're broadcasting this, I don't want to get say words that's going to trigger them to, to cut our deal. But it's, a, it's for a pew-pew. Do you know what a pew-pew is? Yeah. If you don't, then you'll never, you don't, you're not interested. If you don't know what pew pew is, you're not interested, but it's, and, and, and they're $20 a piece and, uh, it's for a, um, a six, but turned upside down millimeter. You understand what I mean? And what I would like you all to do is you all to go buy a ticket for $20 and then feel the lead of the spirit to bring that ticket to me. <laughs> And just, you know, up my chances, right? And so anyways, but uh, we're going to help them do that and look forward to that. And then there's one other thing. Oh, turkey drive this Saturday. We need all hands on deck. If you're available to help, we'd love to have you. Uh, be here around nine o'clock. It usually takes two to three hours to get through everybody. Um, and uh, it's going to be a great, it's a great drive. Uh, the turkeys will be here on, on, some of them will be here on Friday. Some will be here on Saturday. But we're going to make sure and, uh, that we get a turkey to everyone that we possibly can. And then make sure we get food to everybody. However, not everyone likes turkey. I think I'm talking to a lot of turkeys and you're offended by that. <laughs> Lord, why is it there's always one of the three, there's always one service that you're going to make me fight you the whole service. You know what it is? I, I just figured it out. The Holy Spirit just told me. You're a bunch of cowboy fans and you know you're about to lose. <laughs> and you're already depressed. And you're fighting depression and anxiety. And I'm going to help you with that today. Jeez. All right. Well, won't you stand to your feet for the reading of the word this morning? Amen. Psalm 34, verse number one. He said, I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make it boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. He said, I sought the Lord and he heard me. Someone say, he heard me. He said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I want to talk to you for a few moments on a message I've entitled, The War Within. The War Within. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. I thank you, Lord, for your presence, God. I ask you, Lord, today, let your spirit, Father, be poured out in this house. Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God, bring things back to remembrance, God, that you've spoke to me, that you've shown me, God. And Lord... Allow us, Father, to grow closer to you. Lord, I thank you, Father, for your presence that's in this place. Now, Lord, have your way. And God, today we'll give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. Lord bless you. You can be seated this morning if you can. God desires his children to live in victory. God, God wants you to live in victory. He is a victorious God, and he desires that his children are victorious. Now, how many of you understand that even though we live in a life of victory, there are times it's going to be difficult? There are seasons in life that is going to be difficult. There are seasons in life where things may not always go our way, but God said that we're still victorious. Some of you have been watching the scoreboard of life way too long, and you need to focus your eyes on God and let you understand and know that God is for you, not against you, that you are walking in victory. Even though you may be in the valley, I want you to know that it is in the valley where the growth of God happens. You are growing with God right now. And so God wants us to work on that we are living a victorious lifestyle. Victory is the battle cry of the believer. We are victorious. Well, pastor, I don't feel that way. Then get over it. Sometimes we allow our feelings to dictate our faith. But our faith should dictate our feelings. 
Our faith should say, well, I am victorious. Well, I don't feel good. I'm still victorious. God never told you you could, you could have a day off of being victorious. God never told you that you could waste your breath with negativity and not praise. Well, I, I believe that even in our darkest hours, he has called us to praise him. He said, let everything that has breath, Psalm 150, he said, let everything that has breath Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. He didn't say if you feel good. He didn't say if everything's going right. He said praise the Lord. Why? Because it is our battle cry that we are victorious. I will praise the Lord even, the, even when the enemy is knocking at my door. I will praise the Lord even when the enemy has knocked down the walls of my house. I will praise the Lord when my life has been decimated. Why? Because as long as I have faith, I'll be back. First John 5 and 4 says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Now, I've been preaching this a lot. I believe in the deliverance. I believe that God delivers. It's scripturally proven. I've watched it happen. I've had it happen in my life. I believe in deliverance. But the problem that I have with deliverance is we become so longing for deliverance that we don't pray for strength to overcome. We get to the place to where we feel so entitled. God, just take it from me. God, just do it for me. God, just do this. And God said, no, I'm going to give you the strength to overcome. There are some things you're going to have to do. How many of you understand that there are times that God's going to order you your path and your steps in places you don't desire to be? And it's in those moments that you better get ready. God's not going to deliver you. He's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you strength to go into the lion's den. He's going to give you strength to go into the fiery furnace. He's going to give you strength to do things that you don't have the strength to do on your own. And, but yet we just pray for deliverance and then we get upset when he doesn't deliver you. You need to understand some of God's greatest work is when he gives you strength to overcome. You're, the word of God said that we are overcomers. We are not weak. That means when you are an overcomer, you are strong. That means I've had the strength to get through it. There have been times in my life I wanted to give up, but the strength of God would come over my life and he would give me the strength to get through it. If you would ever trust God enough to allow him to strengthen you, instead of, oh, but God, do you ever think God gets tired of hearing your whine? You know, some of, some of you sound like the old hee-haw song. Where, oh, where are you tonight? That's your, that's your prayer to God. Where are you at, God? Help me, God. Deliver me, God. And God's like, no, get up, dust yourself off, and keep on walking. And you're like, but it feels, see, you know what I've learned about people? We get addicted to the attention we get when we're broken. Feel sorry for me because I'm going through it right now. I'm glad Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't have Facebook. <laughs> oh, the King Nebuchadnezzar, he's, he's upset with me and he's going to order me to the fiery furnace. You pray for me. I'm glad Elijah didn't have Facebook whenever, when old Queen... Jezebel threatened to kill his life and he ran off into the cave. And, and, and could you imagine what Elijah would look like up in the cave on Facebook? <sighs> Nobody loves me anymore. She's gonna kill me. I just called fire down from heaven and, and killed the prophets of Baal, all 400 of them, and God provided for me there. But now she spoke up and, oh, pray for me all by myself. <laughs> and that's what, that's what Christians in 2024 looks like. Some of you should go back and read your post. It's anti-faith. You don't have faith for nothing. 
You don't have faith that your nostrils will be able to take in enough oxygen to breathe because you're, you're, you're in depression. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Lord, help me, Jesus. And God said, I'm sending you help, but it may not look like what you want. I had someone a few years ago, they said, I like a pastor that's more compassionate than you. <laughs> and my response was, well, I like a congregation that's stronger than you. <laughs> this, is, this is it. This is it. If, if you need someone to hold your hand, and to walk you through the valley of shadow of death, I'm not it. I'm gonna sit on the sideline over here and say, you got it. And if you need me, call Sarah. <laughs> but I think that Christianity in America has gotten so weak because we have walked outside of where God's called us to be and we have fallen in love with the attention that our struggle gets us. I'm so sick and tired of people saying on, on social media, please pray for me. I got COVID for the 18th time. <laughs> Why are you afraid? Listen, most people probably in this room have had COVID. A couple of you look dead, but most of you look like you survived. <laughs> you, you, uh, stop being afraid of things. If death is our reward, why are you afraid of dying? Well, I don't want to miss our kids. I, listen, my, kid, my kids are going to be happy when I'm gone because their inheritance that they're going to receive if they live for Jesus is going to be greater than I'm willing to give them on earth. Right? So they're going to be just fine. They're going to say, well, they're going to hear their voice. Trust me. There are millions of, of copies of me preaching the word. They can hear my voice anytime they want. So victory is not for the faint of heart. It's not for the weak. For God doesn't promise an easy journey. Look at John 16 and 32. Jesus speaking here, he said, indeed the hour has come, yes, and has now come, that you will be scattered, each to his own, and you will, le and, and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. Look at verse 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace, and in the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now, I want to break this down just for for you just a little bit. Uh, look at what he's saying here in verse 32. Put verse 32 back up. Lord Jesus, I got confused for a second. All I saw was a Spanish translation and I thought I was in a different country. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, indeed, the hour is coming, yes, and it has come, that you will be scattered. You know what he's telling you? He said, everything that you're comfortable with is about to be taken away from you. He said, you're about to be scattered each to his own and, and will leave me alone. <laughs> Even Jesus gets tired of your whining. <laughs> Some of you didn't like that. That's all right. And, and he said, and yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. Go to verse 33. He said, these things I have spoken to you that in me that you may have peace. Stop right there. You need to understand that God is your peace. This world is not your peace. I, I, I told the first service, Pastor Sarah, she is not my peace. Why? Because the moment that she has a bad day, my peace is disrupted. Right. Amen. If you Listen, every married person knows what I'm talking about. You say, well, I thought you loved each other. Listen, love sometimes is violent. Praise the Lord. <laughs> sometimes love is disruptive but my peace is not in my wife my peace is in my God he said in the world you will have tribulation now you have to understand I, this, the problem that we have in America is we don't teach you the whole word of God we just teach you the things that make you want to give money and be blessed but the truth of the matter is Jesus is telling you you're going to have tribulation just because you get saved doesn't mean life just gets easy. Matter of fact, I can promise you, I guarantee you, that when you get saved, it is, it is the time that you've set up with war that you didn't completely understand the war that you're about to walk into. And tribulation can, can and will come knocking at your door. Jesus is telling them, listen, tribulation is coming. But be now, I don't know about you, I never get happy about being in pain. I don't like tribulation, I like peace, right? I, I, I've, I've had hard times, I don't really wanna go back. But I've learned this, if hard times is coming, God's on my side. He said, be of good cheer. He said, I have overcome the world. Now why is that so important? Because the Bible goes on to tell you that the same spirit that lived in Christ now lives in me. 
The same spirit that lived in Christ now lives in you. And if he overcome the world, then you can overcome the world. So be of good cheer. So that means when tribulation comes, be of good cheer. Give God praise. Understand he's on your side and he's about to turn it all around for your good and his glory. That's what God does. So Jesus doesn't promise an easy path. He actually tells us there's going to be struggle, but in the struggle, he will give us strength to what? To overcome. Why? Because we're overcomers in Jesus. When we overcome, doesn't mean that we will have trophies and parades, but we'll have Jesus. Why is that important? Because Jesus is my hope. Jesus is my joy. Jesus is my healing. Jesus is my salvation. Jesus is my strength. Jesus is whatever I need him to be. He will always be that. That's why he said, I am the great I am. I am blank, whatever you need me to be. You need him to be a counselor, I am your counselor. You need to be a provider, I am your provider. Whatever you need him to be, he will be. He called you to be an overcomer and he's going to give you the tools to overcome. That's what we need. We need Jesus. And the problem that we have is we get outside of ourselves and we start trusting in other things besides who he is. Can I tell you that other people will fail you? But Jesus can't. And you may say this, you may say, yeah, but he's never on time. No, 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 he's not on your time. See, God's time is perfect. Your time is for your comfort. Well, God, if you'd have just showed up a day earlier. You know what I've learned about God? God's going to make sure your faith is intact. That means that you're, you're exactly where you're supposed to be in your faith. Because if there's any weakness, he's going to get it out of you. Proverbs says to burn away, that he will... Uh, he, he, says, he said, would you burn the dross out of me? The dross is the things that keep the growth from coming forth. Will you burn out the junk? The only time you can burn out the junk is to put fire and heat to it and burn out the impurities. That's why gold is so precious. The impurities, the impurities have been burned out of it. When you allow the impurities to be burnt out of your life, then you'll understand your faith and your trust can only be in God. That's why Proverbs Chapter number three, it, it says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your what? With all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. He said, he said in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall what? Direct your path. Now, isn't it interesting? How many of you, when you drive, you would prefer the passenger princess not to correct the direction that you're going. There's only a few brave men, a bunch of cowards up in this church. Now listen, when I'm driving, I know where I'm going. We live in Greenwood. When Sarah says, I'm hungry, I said, well, let's go in town and get something to eat. Because I know if she was hungry and wanted to cook, she had already been cooking. But when, did you hear some of the? <laughs> but when she says, I'm hungry, and I go, I don't smell nothing. Well, then let's go in town to eat. Because what I've learned in Greenwood, if you go get it and bring it back, it's cold. And so I said, let's go in town and go eat. And she says, okay. And I get in the truck and I say, where do you want to eat? And she goes, I don't care. I said, they're closed on Saturdays. <laughs> Listen, one day if I ever retire preaching, I'm going to start a restaurant and I'm going to call it I Don't Care Cafe. <laughs> and it's going to be busy all the time. <laughs> and... <laughs> And I get in there, and I'm driving down 307, coming into, into town, and, and, and we pick a restaurant where we want to go. Now, once we know where we want to go, it's up to the driver to get us there. And she's not in here, and she's not listening, I don't think. 
I'm just saying is that if you wanted to drive, you should have drove. I'm driving. My truck goes where I want it to go. And she just be like, why'd you go that way? <laughs> and I, I'm gifted with a very spiritual gift of sarcasm. <laughs> but it's like this. It's like lean not on your own understanding. Have you ever put in directions? If you're going to go someplace, you put directions in to Apple Maps or Google Maps, and, and then all of a sudden you're driving and it tells you to turn right? but you don't want to turn right because you've always went straight. You kind of know where you're going, but you put it in directions. Because See, us men, ladies, us men, we do that because that little time, it says time of arrival, we're going to beat it every time. <laughs> and that's why we look at you and say, you can hold it. You don't need a bathroom break right now. We're on schedule to beat the time. It is a competition every time. Stop messing with my race. And, and, and all of a sudden it says, turn right. And I'm like, no, and I just keep on driving. And it says, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. And then you just mute it because you get tired of hearing it. But what you didn't understand was it saw something ahead of you that it was trying to detour you around. And there are times that God's going to direct your path, but it's not in the direction that you thought it was going to be. There are some times God will take you to Dallas, but he's going to take you to Dallas through Big Lake. And Big Lake's not on the way to Dallas, but it is on the way that God desires for you to go because he wants you to trust in him in every area of your life and lean not on your own understanding, but trust his path. When I talk about this story, it reminds me of my older brother. When he was 14, we lived in Kansas. And in, at that time in Kansas, I'm not for sure if it's the same, but at 14, you get your driver's license. And um, he was driving, and he had his driver's license, and um, he was going down a dirt road. We lived out in the country on a dirt road, but he was going down a dirt road that we never traveled on. Now, I'm not for sure why he did it, but that's what he was on. Now, he says he wasn't going very fast, and I say Revelation 21.8 but he hit a rut in, his, in the Ford Taurus in the first, like the first, if you remember, if you're old enough for the Ford Taurus when they first came out, and, and he hit the front, uh, the front tire, hit a rut, and his car did two cartwheels, tore his seatbelt in two, ejected him through the passenger window, and the car rolled on top of his foot. His foot was locked under it. If you ever see my older brother on his right arm, um, you could actually see the joint of his elbow because it was cut 500 some stitches inside his arm. Um, this is a road that's not traveled very often. And uh, he, he wakes up, he sees where he's at, he's covered in stickers and he pulls his foot out of the boot and he just begins to walk and he doesn't know where he's at. And he goes up to a house and he's bleeding all over the front porch and he knocks on the door and no one answers. And he walks back and he, he's walking down the road and a farmer stops to pick him up and takes him to the hospital. And the doctor told him later, he said if he would have been five minutes later, he would have died, he would have bled out. There's, he, he could not have made it any longer. My parents actually got to speak to the farmer and said, thank you for, for going that way. He said, you need to thank God. And they said, well, we do thank God. He said, no, I never go down that road. He said, I passed that road and I felt the Holy Spirit say, stop. I stopped and backed up and went down the road and I saw your son walking down the path. You need to understand. When God says to not lean on your own understanding, what he's meaning is there are times he's going to direct your path. Sometimes it's to save you, but sometimes it's to save someone else. And he just needs people to trust him, even though you may have to go down a road that's bumpy and you don't deserve it. God has a plan for every road that he's ever directed your path. So the war within will cause two things. The war within will, number one, cause... It will challenge your victories. The war within will challenge your victory. Number one, you challenge your victories. James 1 and 5 says, If any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, 
and it will be given to him. He said, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. He said, let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. We have to understand and know this today, that God is calling people to have faith and stop doubting God. The problem that we have is this moment that it doesn't happen the way we believe it should, we start believing God can't hear us. The greatest lie that the enemy has over your life is a manipulation that the enemy has over your voice, over your head to speak into you. When God's bringing victory into your life, all of a sudden you start doubting it because it doesn't look right. Well, this is not what I signed up for. Well, it's not what anyone signed up for, but it is the path that God's directed. And the victory that you're walking in right now, it doesn't look victorious, but it will be. When we first started Elevate Church, we didn't look like victory. We, we looked like defeat, right? You walked in here, it smells pretty good here today, but back then, 11 years ago, it smelled like Marlboro's. Some Sundays, some good Sundays, it smelled like weed. <laughs> I just told Sarah, we'd walk in here and you'd say, whoo, someone's lit. I said, just take deep breaths. God can't get mad at you for breathing. <laughs> Jesus, help me. And there was days we walked in here and it didn't look like victory. It looked like defeat. There were days it looked like, it, it, it didn't look like it was. And the whole time God said, no, no. He said, you're doing what you're supposed to. I said, God, it, it, this, this, is, this, is, this is getting worse. Wake up on a Sunday morning and you, you, you come in here and getting ready for church. You find out that none of the air conditioners work. And I got called Jimmy, 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 the air conditioners aren't working. Jimmy's like, I'll, get, I'll see what I can do to get one working. He'd get one working. I think, thank God everyone quit breathing. Your, your hot air is filling the room up. And it'd be hot, and you'd be thinking, I'd be, and Sarah and I would go home and like, babe, I know we're doing a good work, but it doesn't feel good right now. <laughs> babe, it doesn't feel right right now. God, it's, it, it, it's it, every time. Have you, ever, have you ever whined during your victory? Because it doesn't look like the victory you're used to. Your victory that you're used to looks like the, the hamburger from McDonald's on the commercial. But the victory you're walking in looks like the one you got through the drive through And you look at it and it's all there, but it's messy. And they didn't give you no napkins. None of you had victories like that. And you're walking in victory and God said, just keep on going. And I'm like, but God, how much longer? And you start doubting. I want you to look at the scripture. We're, we're going to read when Peter is walking on water. Because I want you to see how the enemy will mess with you. Look at Matthew chapter number 14, verse number 28. He said, and Peter said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Stop right there. Do you understand that Peter was in a boat? Peter was in safety. And Peter asked for supernatural. When you ask for the supernatural, it's going to take you out of your safety and place you in a place of danger. He goes on, verse 29. So he, speaking of Jesus, said, come. Stop right there. Be careful what you ask for. Because sometimes Jesus will just say, come on. He said, when Peter had come out, come down out of the boat, he walked on water to go to Jesus. Stop right there. That's supernatural. That's victory. Right? I don't know about you, but I'm, it depends on what day it is and what quick stop I walk in. On a good day, I'm about six, I'm anywhere between 5'10 and, and 6'4. Depends on which convenience store I walk into. And depends on what doctor scale I get on. I'm anywhere from 258 pounds to 272. 
Now, the doctor scale that was 272, I, I fired him, and I'm not going back to him no more. But you walk in this victory, you walk in victory, and now he's walking on water. I'm a big guy. When I step out on the water, if I could walk on water, I'm dense. I don't float, I sink. If I could walk on water, Jesus, if that's you, just tell me to come, and I'll come out there to you. And Jesus says, come. And I step out of the boat, and I'm walking on water. Now, now, now listen, some of you are holy. I know, that, I know this. I can tell by your facial expression that you're holy, but I'm not so holy. Because when I start walking on water, I'd be like, I'd be doing the praise dance all the way to Jesus. And I'd be excited about walking on the water because it's what I asked for, and it's what I got. I'm walking in the supernatural. How many of you know when Peter's walking on water, he is walking in victory? But the war within will challenge your victories. Let's read forward. Then, verse 30, but when he saw that the wind was boisterous, I didn't know that Midland had a lake, but the wind was boisterous, he was what? From victory to fear. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you little faith, why do you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Why? Why did the wind cease when they got into the boat? Because the enemy didn't need to bring fear into Peter's life anymore because now he was back in the safety where God had always called Peter to be. Peter asked to get out of the boat. Jesus led him, and he's walking in supernatural victory, and now the enemy wants to disrupt the supernatural victory. Why? Because if us believers would learn to walk in supernatural victory, the devil don't have a chance on this earth. And that's why we have to get outside of our minds when we're walking in victory and it begins to look a little sketchy and it looks a little fearful. We say, no, no, I don't have fear. God has me here. I'm going to be okay. And the second thing that the war within will do is will make you stronger in your praise. Psalm 100 says this, said, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. He said, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is what? Everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Now, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ruffle some of your feathers today because you need to understand today that throughout the word of God, God has called us to always be a praising people. Isn't it funny how we've allowed the enemy to come into the American church and to teach you and to train you to be quiet? You've got to be reverent in the house of God. Who said Scripture and verse, you ain't going to find it. Well, but pastor, this is what we've been taught. Just because you've been taught something don't mean it's right. Racism is taught, don't make it's right. Right? So just because you taught something don't mean nothing. Well, pastor, you know, the ushers used to thump us in the head if we got too disruptive in church. I'm thinking about Nick making a new policy at Elevate. If you're too quiet, we're going to thump you in the head. <laughs> right? Why? Because everywhere that the Word of God shows us that we are to what? Praise Him. But I hear people say, well, Pastor, I'm, that's just not my personality. Girl, I watched you at the ball game. <laughs> you hit your neighbor. You screamed. Your makeup was coming off your face. You screamed so hard, your eyelids said, boing. <laughs> but we come into church. Praise the Lord. 
Isn't the Lord so good? <laughs> give the joy, give the, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> praise the Lord. But here in a few hours, the cowgirls are going, I mean, the cowboys are going to play. <laughs> and I had a prophetic word at the funeral yesterday. The cowboys are going to lose again, so that's, it's okay. <laughs> But they're going to give you enough hope. Just enough hope. The DAC attack has retired. And now we've got the rushing Cooper. Cooper, whoever. And now we have chance. And they're going to score a touchdown. And you're going to go, this is it. This is our year. We're going to, we're going to make a Super Bowl. And Badger Shannon, he's going to eat his words. <laughs> but in church, you're like, praise the Lord. wish he wouldn't talk about this. See, some of you are not going to like heaven because the American church has ruined you. Well, I like a church that's quiet. The only time a church is quiet is funerals. Heaven's going to be loud. And if you don't like repeating songs now, you should think about your eternal destination because you may not like heaven at all. I can, can you imagine the comment section in heaven? <laughs> Jesus, can we sing any other songs besides holy, holy, holy is the Lord? Like can't we sing amazing grace? No, because you don't need grace. In heaven. And we get so set in our mind that we lose our shout because we become dignified. He said, I'm about to be done. <laughs> you know, I don't even know why they try to put a timer on that back thing back there. <laughs> First of all, I'll be 49 in a few weeks if you'd like to give any uh, gifts, praise the Lord. I like. <laughs> and it's on Thanksgiving Day, so Thanksgiving Day, everyone celebrate me. <laughs> Over there, you're gonna celebrate me, thank you. Your birthday on Thanksgiving too. We got two turkeys in the group. <laughs> Listen. I got 45 seconds. They don't mean nothing. They just turned the TVs off. Look at the Lord. The glory, of, oh, they came back on. I thought God heard my prayer. But we've allowed the enemy to riddle believers with anxiety that gets us so nervous that when something good happens, all of a sudden we believe that it's too good to be true and now something bad's on its way. Believers. I hear it all the time, Pastor Sheldon, pray for me, all this good stuff happening, I know something bad's about to happen too. You better stop that, you're putting word curses over your life that God never intended for you. God said he's gonna bless you, he didn't say he's gonna harm you. That even though the, even though the, the, winds, the winds may come and the rain may come, my God will build a shelter over my head and I will be okay. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I believe that God's on my side and he's not against me. So therefore, I will praise the Lord at all costs. I don't care who I upset. I don't care who I bother. I don't care how many devils I disrupt today. I've just decided that on this very day, I'm going to praise the Lord with you or without you. I'm going to praise the Lord. And we get into this mode that we walk into our spiritual walk and we say, well, I just don't know if God's going to get us through. And my question for you is, what has ever caused you to doubt? If you look at most unanswered prayers, what we call them unanswered prayers, your unanswered prayers have been a blessing to you. I 
I used to pray, God, when someone would walk out of my life, I'd pray, God, bring them back. And they never would come back. And what I realized then, God knows better than me. The reason that some people can't be in your life is that because they will take away from your blessing, not add to it. And we've allowed the enemy to bring anxiety into our life. And today it's time that we understand that the war within, we have to win it with the Lord. And we have to win it with victory. Won't you stand to your feet today? I, um, I don't know about you, but I get tired. I get tired of watching the enemy steal from people that I love. And you may say, well, Pastor, how did you get the enemy to stop stealing from you? I quit letting him. Why is it that we justify the attacks of the enemy? See, the reason that maybe your marriage is the way it is is because your mind has been overcome by thoughts not of God but of the enemy that he's come to steal, kill, and destroy but Jesus said he come to bring life and life more abundantly John 10 and 10 if God promised me life and abundant life why do I settle for steal, kill, and destroy I didn't say this in the first service I feel really led to say this it's because some of you watched your parents walk through steal, kill, and destroy, and that's what they live by. And you think you're just carrying on the heritage of your family. And I'm here to tell you today, you need to break that curse off your family in Jesus' name and learn to walk in abundant life and walk in, in, the, in the plan that God has for you. The faith that is in you, that God has instilled in you, is for you and for the generations after you. See, I don't want my kids to have to fight the same devils that I had to fight. I want them to understand who God is at a young age. I want them to understand who God is right now in their life. And that way, when they are my age, they will see the fullness of who God is in them. I don't worry about tomorrow. Well, Pastor Shelton, didn't you get worried about that election? I ain't worried about who the president is. I thank God of the results, but it doesn't matter. My God still sits on the throne. He has all the answers. My God has the ability to turn my worst nightmare around to his glory. He just needs people that has faith to hold on that when all hell is launched that you'll stand. And I've watched people all my life battle with a spirit called anxiety. And I've watched God's people lean on medication and not the strength of the Lord. And I believe that God sent me today with a word that's going to break the chain of anxiety and you'd walk in the fullness of who God truly is. So I want you to have the greatest season of Thanksgiving and Christmas. I, I don't want you to walk into it. See, see, some of you, mm, when, if your family brings you that much anxiety, find new people to hang with. 
I'm going to upset some people. There is no word in the Word of God, there is no law in America that says you've got to celebrate your holidays with your family. You know who I'm going to celebrate it with? People that love me and that I love. And then I refuse to allow that anxiety to come into my life. There are people, you say, Pastor, don't you have anxiety? There's people that I don't like at all. Listen, the Bible says I have to love you, not like you. I can love you from a distance and never talk to you again. But when I walk in my house on Thanksgiving Day, the people that's going to be there with me, they're going to love me. They're going to love my wife. Oh, I'm going to help someone. They're going to love my wife. They're going to love my children. Guess what? And if they have a problem with my wife, they have a problem with me. I'm going to help somebody. I don't know who this is for. But listen, if, you're, if, if, you're in, if your parents don't like your spouse, then you'll, you better support your spouse. You ain't married to your parents. Start drawing lines. Start being strong. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Listen. I will defend my wife. She will defend me. And if it's just us two, then it's just us two. I won't even allow my children to disrupt my house. I'm going deeper. Some of your children are grown and they've chosen their path. Let them live that path outside. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That means what walks in my house is going to be under the covering of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to say this to the camera, but I believe there's people in here that needs to hear it too. Listen, they're not bringing their drugs. They're not bringing their alcohol. They're not bringing their, their little partner in life. They're not bringing anything into my house that's going to bring my house and out of the covering of God. Because that's who God is. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. I thank you, Father, for your presence, Lord. God, I ask you, Lord, today, Father, allow your spirit, Lord, to help us, Lord, grow in you right now. Lord, would you allow your spirit to move? Would you allow your spirit to, to saturate this place right now? And I pray, Father, today, Lord, anyone that's dealing with anxiety, Father, it would be released off them right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That the war within, Lord, we're going to conquer it right now. Lord, we are victorious. The battles are yours. And we thank you, Father, for it right now in Jesus' name. If you're in your seat right now and you say, Pastor Sheldon, I battle anxiety, will you just lift both your hands right now and just begin to get free right now in Jesus' name? Just get free right now. Just get free right now. Just begin to release it right now to God. Just begin to just release it right now. Everything that's held you back, just release it right now. God doesn't want that spirit on you. God wants you to walk in freedom and liberty. God wants you to walk in His presence. God wants you to walk where, where His presence is. Anxiety is not where His presence is. He is the peace, not just maker. He is the peace giver. He has given us the gift of peace as believers, and we will walk in His peace right now in Jesus' name. Lord, today, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. There is peace right now in Jesus' name, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, there's not going to be a disruptive spirit no longer, but God, there is going to be peace right now in Jesus' name. I bind every hindrance right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray, Father, today, Lord, God, that your spirit, Father, will lift up things that have been broken right now in Jesus' name, God. I pray, Father, today, Lord, God, you are clearing out the path right now in Jesus' name, Lord. God, we're not going to live to find other people's approval. God, we're looking for your approval right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I speak peace today. Peace over a mind that wanders. Peace over a mind that rages. Peace over a mind that walks in fear. God, I pray peace today in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask you, Father, today, let your spirit, Lord, move. God, today, Lord, break every chain of anxiety, Father. Let your spirit move, God. Let your spirit be free. God, today in Jesus' name.
I, I see adult children that bring down the standard of the home when they show back up. And if that's you, I just want you to lift your hands. God's about to pour out strength over your life right now. I'm not, I don't even care to look. If you have children that they lower the standard of your home when they get there, I want you to raise your hands and receive strength right now in Jesus' name. God is pouring out strength for you to stand for the word of God. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. The, I, I feel this as a word of the Lord. The only way they're going to receive God is when you raise up a standard for them to receive it. They see you as playing games. Mom's never made me Mom's never made me stand before. Mom's never made me do that before. Dad's always been the one, but I feel like there's a spirit over a mom today that's about to raise up and hold a standard. As for me and my house, we're not we're going to serve the Lord. We're not going to do the things we've done in the past. Things are different today. I'm tired of giving in to the enemy. Today I will walk in the strength of God. I will walk and I declare today that these homes are strengthened today, right now in Jesus' name. I declare it. I declare it right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus name listen to me every time if you have if you have anxiety this is what you, I, I want you to do every time you have anxiety I want you to take that thought and I want you to bind it in Jesus name and you start focusing on the things of God and start stop focusing on the things that bring you anxiety God's been good to us and when our faith connects his spirit will lead us to a new place. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, just real quick before we dismiss, uh, we will be having our Christmas angels out, out front and also the raffle for Millen Police Department. Amen. So show them your support. Hey, dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you so much for just a time in your presence, Father God. We ask that you bless each and every person that heard your word, Father God. We just ask that they um, be blessed abundantly through it, Father God. Allow their fruit to show, Father God. Allow their fruit to be good. We just love you and thank you, Father God, for this church, our pastors, and everything that you're doing within Elevate Church, Father God, and outside of Elevate Church. We thank you so much for this opportunity. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. You're dismissed. Have a good day. Thank you.